And here we are now in the wet season. Um, hi, Cal. The sound of hammering rings through the gardens, and you find Cal helping your mom build a row of raised garden beds. Turns out some of the earth plants don't grow so great here, so we're going to see if this helps. He says, taking a break to rub his face. Your mom stifles a laugh at the, the smear of dirt leaves across his cheek. Your mom says we gotta worry about the nitrogen level soon, he continues, but that hopefully we'll be eating just plants that grow here before then. Okay. Uh, does anyone else have anything to say? Tang? Tang is craning her head, looking around what she can see of the colony from the laboratory doors. Have you seen my brother? She asked. He stormed out of class today again. She pinches the bridge of her nose. All I did was point out that he consistently makes the same mathematical error and offer a mnemonic to aid his memory in the future. I don't see how I'm the monster here. Uh, what about you, <laughs> Anemone? Anemone looks up from her hollow palm and sighs dramatically as you approach. Man, I hate school learning, she exclaims, prodding at her screen. Why do I even have to do this? Because, as my parents say, it's pretty important. Uh, hey, Dees, your sister, and you're just playing a game. I'm not sure if your sister would approve of that, but okay. Oh, I have a ripe blue bobber fruit. Hey, Cal, you like blue bobber fruit, right? Uh, Cal is lying in a scrub grass. Yeah, it really is beautiful here. <laughs> Uh, here. <laughs> I'm glad you liked it. Oh, he has something to say. You spot Cal heading towards the barns at the far end of the farms. Hiya, Solana, he waves. Just heading over to the barn, Cal says. I've finished before everyone else today, so I told everyone I'm going to clean it. No one wants to get roped into helping, so it'll j just be me and Socks. You should come with. Ooh, Socks. I can't wait to see him again, or her. Sweet little baby socks. Cal whistles as you enter the barn, and the chest where Socks sleeps starts to rattle. He laughs and pops the lid, hefting Socks into his arms. Hey girl, he coos. Time to get some forbidden daytime zoomies out? You and Cal play with Socks for a little while, chasing her around the barn. She chitters and stomps her stubby little legs, clearly enjoying the attention. I have a while before I have to go back to work, Cal says. What should we do? Uh, how about we just take a break and enjoy her? Cal sighs dreamily. You're right, he says. We've been working too hard. You, Cal, and Socks curl up together on a scratchy blanket. Then pr Cal produces from one of the storage bins. She fits nicely right between the two of you, pressing her little white feet against your tummy as she wriggles around to get comfortable. When everyone is settled, you close your eyes for a bit of much needed rest. Oh! Okay, see, now I'm at empathy level one. Oh, maybe I get empathy by giving people gifts? But now we have a spa. That's cool. And I guess We'll go help out in geoponics. And since we can't do anything in xenobotany until we get that third meshwood, I guess I'll be helping on the farm. You're helping your mom repair the garden fence when you see Cal slip away into the barn carrying a blanket. You excuse yourself and follow him. Does he still have socks? Still have socks. Cal looks up at you and smiles, cradling socks in his arms and rocking her back and forth. The little nubs on her butt seem like they're getting longer. She must be growing. I made her a little bed in that trunk over here, he says. She mostly just likes to be curled up in the dark. She sleeps a lot, probably because she's growing. <laughs> Socks chirps and Cal sits on the floor, letting her curl up in his lap. I've been coming early every morning and staying late every day so she can play in the sun, he explains. That's when she's most active, but her favorite thing is lying in my lap for belly rubs. He tickles her soft tummy. Isn't that right, Socks? Who's a good dilly pillar? You are, you are. Socks trills in delight. Do you want to feed her? Cal asks. I collected a bunch of leaves for her. Here, take one. You kneel down beside them and 
take one of the leaves, socks trottles from a cow's lap to into your cupped hands and gingerly holds the leaf between her two front paws. She's like a tiny dinosaur caterpillar. Munch, munch, munch. Oh, ouch! Socks nips at your finger. Your teeth are really, really star sharp. Uh, it, it, it's fine. She probably didn't mean to hurt me. You probably just got a little over eager with the leaf. You pretend it doesn't hurt, but it super does hurt. You can barely keep yourself from crying as Socks munches happily on at the rest of the leaf. See, she didn't mean it. She just got a little over eager with the leaf. When she's done, Cal puts her gently back into the box. Then he notices your hand and gasps. Solana, you're hurt. Cal looks over your finger, which is bleeding sluggishly from a shallow puncture wound. I learned first aid from my mom, he says. Let's just wrap it up and tell people you banged it in a door, okay? He bites his lip. If people think she's dangerous, they'll take her away. She's not dangerous. It was just an accident. I know, Cal. It was just an accident. Cal brushes his hand over the loose dirt and straw of the barn floor. My mom says that aliens here are dangerous, he mutters. I asked, like, in theory, if I found an alien, could I keep it as a pet? But she said I can't, even if it's a nice alien, because of diseases and stuff. He sighs. Socks isn't sick, he insists, and she doesn't mean to hurt anybody. A other animals probably don't either. Oh. Uh, here. Let's And that's 22. And I got three stars. Oh, I got another new park. Oh, I reached toughness level one too. Cool. Okay. Um, let's see if there's anything to collect. Wait, what was that? Nope, just a regular plant. Okay. Um, hmm. I don't see anything up here. Okay. Uh, I guess we'll talk to Count again. And he's admiring the nature and the beauty of this planet. And I think this month I will work on the farm with him again. The colony has one massive multi-purpose programmable bot. Usually Geoponics uses it to till the fields and help with the planting and the harvesting. It breaks down a lot, but you kind of love it anyways. It's a big, slow friend. At one point, you kids start decorating it with stickers and your mom never stopped you. You and Cal are out in the field when they're planting this new kind of native plant called a pixie bean. These things are incredible. They glow in the dark. Cal is in a goofy mood and doesn't want to work. You've got the rubble plow for the day, and he suggests you ride it around on it. Um, hmm. I don't want to just slack off, but... We might get in trouble for riding around on it, but, I mean, I am feeling pretty stressed, so maybe I do just want to have fun with Cal. You and Cal ride the roboplow around. It's fun, and it's nice to feel the breeze on your face all the way up here. Your mom catches you doing this and yells at you to get back to work, and she's right. As you climb down for the last time, the bot coughs and shudders to a stop. Your mom is so grumpy that she has to stop what she's doing and fix the bot again. You're cleaning the bot off to put it away for the night when security officer Rhett shows up. Hello children, when you're done please deliver the MMPG to the garrison. We need it to shore up the walls tomorrow. Wait, but we need it tomorrow, Cal says. He strokes the sticker covered flank of the bot. Are you going to bring it back after? After we're done with it, Rhett replies, you and Cal exchange a look. Working on the walls is a never-ending project. You get the feeling that if he takes the plow, you won't be getting it back anytime soon. Certainly not in time for the next harvest. Um, I should check with my mom first. Are you sure? Rhett says. Come on, don't be childish. You can 
Just tell her we need it. It's our plow. Huh? I wonder what those signs mean. You and Cal protest. Not only do you need it here in the geoponics, but it doesn't even work half the time. They'll just break it. And you really, really need it for planting. Somehow, you managed to convince Rhett that the robo-plow is, is more trouble than it's worth. He says he'll talk to the council about it, but the robo-plow stays where it belongs, in geoponics. Wait, does that mean we have more food but less defense? Here, um, four, five, five, and twenty one. Just in time for late wet season. And hey, Mom. Well, just just checking on you, seeing if you had anything to say to us about the robo plow. <laughs> um, okay, still not seeing anything. Hmm. Okay, I don't see any collectibles this month. I feel like the attack is going to happen less next month again probably given the fact that the last two years we've had an attack in glow season so i feel like it would be wise to try to work on my self-defense anemone can make a competition out of anything fastest lap heaviest lift most boards broken highest kick most of the time she wins too. She's a fierce competitor. Cluster, they're usually over here. Dees. Dees pokes a glowing bubble bud with his toe. The seed head snaps free and drifts up into the dark of glow, slowly breaking up into little luminescent specks. Make a wish, he says. Oh. Um, I hope we don't get attacked this month and nobody gets hurt. And she wants to play tag. Yeah, I mean, playing hide and seek in the dark is fun. Uh, mom, mom. Your mom gives you a stern look. Be careful, she warns. Now that we know for a fact it isn't safe out here during glow, I won't have you venturing close to the wall. Stay where I can see you close to the ship. Uh, I mean, I feel like it would be good to get our self-defense up again now, but I do need to stay close. I Mom said to stay close, so maybe I will go. I wonder, does relaxing in a specific area, will that give us friendship with the person? No, it does not. So I think I'm going to go inside. The world outside in the lounge is dark and eerie, lit mainly by bioluminescent plants and the wormhole that sits low and fat in the sky like an omen. The whole planet feels haunted. You stay indoors where everything seems a little more lively. You don't want to get caught outside. You're right, I don't. And I definitely don't want to forget anything about Cal, and I don't think I need to a level one anymore, so we'll forget that one. 
Two data points form a line, but three is a pattern. The colony has been on high alert all glow, hoping that the creatures from beyond the wall don't return for a third year in a row. Surveyors keep reporting that they're seeing unusual animal activity. Even the plants seem different, they say, and new tracks that must have been left by creatures larger and heavier than you've ever seen. You and the other colonists drill evacuation plans. You're in engineering when you hear the sirens ring through the colony. You cover your ears against the noise and make your way to the nearby classroom. This is one of the assembly points, so you should be safe here, but it wasn't so safe last year for Professor Hal. What if another creature gets in? Congruence, the new teacher, is just a face on a computer screen. She can't protect anyone. Congruence flickers cheerfully. Please stay calm, children, she says. The fence squad is already unread en route to the creatures. They should all be over soon. You've been told this before. As the signs continue, you faced it with a choice. Uh I'm I'm gonna stay. You, Tang, and Mars, and the other kids try to stay calm. Congruence directs you under the big tables, then assigns you a chapter on Earth history as if nothing was happening. It's impossible to think with all the sirens going off. You read and reread the same paragraph over and over, trying not to think about the some monster bursting in through the door or window or wall. Um, maybe if we... But this is serious. But we might be able to make ourselves feel better? You wonder out loud, who farted? I can smell what they had for breakfast. Everyone giggles nervously. Ew, Solana, grosseroni, Mars says, but she's smiling despite herself. You can feel the tension in the room get a little more manageable. It isn't long before the sirens turn off, ringing three short pulses as the all-clear message flashes on your hollow palm. You and the other children file out of engineering and you head back to your quarters. Your parents will want to know that you're safe. Okay, both my parents are here. Your dad gives you a big hug, but your mom slumps into the seat at your small table. Is Cal okay? Is Socks okay? It's like they were going specifically for geoponics this time, she mutters, but your dad pets her hair and shushes her. I'm sure it was just bad luck, Flulubel, he says, but your mom shakes her head and folds her hands in front of her mouth, starting, staring out the porthole window at the fields. Well, at least it seems my wish came true. No one was hurt or died. And we're about to become a teenager at age 13. Okay, here we go.